Most of us uh, take it for granted that we can recognise mm. faces, but for those with a surprisingly common condition, close friends and even family members can appear as strangers. Now, here's an insight into living with face blindness. I'm Marianne Seacart, and I've got a condition called prosopagnosia, also known as face blindness. I've had it all my life, but it was only diagnosed in my 40s. I find it really, really hard to remember the faces of people I've met. There's just a sea of faces around me, and it's not as if they all look exactly the same as each other, but I just don't know who any of them are. So I'm always getting into trouble socially. I'm always offending people, which I hate, because, you know, I like to be polite in life. I don't recognise whole faces, so I have to memorise a list of your individual characteristics. Ideally, for me, someone is going to have a great wart at the end of their nose, or they're going to have a scar on their face, or really unusual hair. That's great for me, because then I will remember who they are next time. When I walk down the street near my house, I have to be really careful not to catch anyone's eye, because I'm so terrified of seeing someone I know and not recognising them, because I'm so scared of snubbing someone by mistake and then being really offended. Sometimes the condition runs in families, and one of my daughters, Evie, has it too. It does bother me. It can often seem light-hearted, but I think what I don't tell people often is that actually it's, it makes every facet of life difficult, at least socially. I make a new friend and I blank them the next day. I, it does bother me, but as disabilities go, it's very much not the worst. I spent 30 years as a newspaper journalist and a lot of that time as a political journalist, which meant I was based in the Palace of Westminster in the House of Commons. I was just surrounded by the sea of middle-aged men in grey suits who all looked the same to me. I had no idea who any of them were. So they'd come bounding up and say, hi, Marianne, you know, what did you think of Prime Minister's questions? And I think, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't even know if they're Labour or Tory. And how am I ever going to find out? It was disastrous. A lot of people think, when I explain this to them, that I'm just making some sort of lame excuse for not having recognised them. And I have to keep saying, look, it's a neurological syndrome. I hate it. I would give anything not to suffer from this, actually. Dr Sarah Bate is leading the research at the Centre for Face Processing Disorders at Bournemouth University. So um, if you put your finger just above your right ear, you'll actually um, be right very close to um, what we call the fusiform gyrus. And that's a brain area that we believe is specified only for faces. Now, there are two types of prosopagnosia, aren't there? That's correct, yes. So there's, first of all, an acquired type, which is where somebody previously had completely normal face recognition skills and then suffered a brain injury. But what seems to be much more common is a developmental form of face blindness. And these people have never experienced a brain injury, but for some reason just have failed to develop normal face recognition skills. I'm meeting three other people with face blindness, and we all struggle with this standard diagnostic test for the condition. See, they all look very similar, don't they? That's just like the previous one to me. If I saw three oh, in big. the crowd, I wouldn't pick him out. I wouldn't be able to tell whether that was a man or a woman. <laughs> I recognise people by a combination of characteristics. I look at body shape, mannerisms, hairstyle. How many people can you recognise now? I wouldn't say any. Right. What about your wife? No. Really? No. My grandson's going to watch him play football, and I never knew where he was on the pitch. And it came, gone out and built him a pair of white boots. Yeah. So I knew where he was Which on the was pitch, him. and I could watch him. Yeah. And there's little things like that. My wife always thought it was because I was just so self-centred that I didn't actually notice people, but I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Face blindness is more common than you'd expect, affecting as many as 1 in 50 people. Autism is thought to affect 1 in 88 people, so we're talking about a condition here which is more prevalent than autism, but much less well known. It's not only just about the research findings, it is about raising public awareness at the same time. And sort of social acceptance. Absolutely. So if I do meet you for the 15th time, please don't be offended if I don't recognise you. It's really not my fault. One in 50 of us. I know, and you start wondering, gosh, have I met people with them? Because mm -hmm. you know, some people well, sure, yeah, struggle, don't they? Well, if you